started. So uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this uh, scholarships and financing university studies in Japan webinar. My name is Ilona Sagaguchi, and I work here at the International Admissions Office at uh, Nagoya University. And I work specifically uh, on the international admissions of the G30 undergraduate and graduate programs. Uh, but uh, today I would like to talk a bit more in general about the different scholarships options that you have available at Nagoya University, as well as in general in Japan. Uh, of course, some of you might be interested in applying to some other universities, so uh, I will try to give kind of a, a wide, wide overview of different kind of scholarship options uh, that you have available for both uh, undergraduate and graduate programs. So yeah, let's just get started. We have quite a lot of content to go through today. So let's see, there we go. Uh, so here is a brief overview of today's topics. Uh, so there will be a very brief introduction. After that, I would like to talk about uh, tuitions and uh, fees, uh, as well as kind of uh, living expenses. Uh, uh, about how much uh, it uh, costs to live in uh, a big city like Nagoya in Japan. Uh, then we will go into the main topic of today's uh, webinar, which is scholarships. So uh, it's divided into undergraduate uh, scholarships and graduate school scholarships. And then I will uh, talk also about other uh, financing, uh, such as doing part-time job at the university, uh, as well as like our tuition waiver programs and things like non-interest lo loans and things like that. And uh, after that, uh, uh, we have a, a G30 student ambassador queen here today, and she will talk about uh, uh, her uh, kind of uh, uh, like current uh, financial si situation. So uh, the kind of scholarships she's gotten while she's been here uh, at Nagoya University as a G30 undergraduate student, uh, how much her monthly costs are roughly and uh, what other things uh, she does to like supplement her income uh, in addition to the uh, scholarships she has. Um, and then finally, after that, uh, there will be a uh, Q&A session where you can ask any questions you might have about uh, like applying for scholarships or what kind of scholarships there are available. Uh, I would like to uh, kind of remind you, so again, uh, we are in webinar mode today, so um, you can't ask uh, questions live from me when I give the presentation, but there are uh, at least uh, four uh, international admissions office staff who will answer questions in the chat and in the Q&A section. So yeah, if there's something that you're kind of want to find more information about, then please check the chat for more links or ask uh, questions in the Q&A uh, function. But let's just get started. So. Uh, uh, just uh, very briefly about Nagoya City. So Nagoya University is, of course, located at Nagoya, Univers uh, Nagoya City. Uh, we are here uh, located uh, just in the middle of uh, the main island of Honsu in, uh, in Japan. Uh, it's a very nice central location, only about one and a half hours from Tokyo by bullet train, uh, about 50 minutes from Osaka, about half an hour from Kyoto. So it's a, it's a great place to be if you uh, kind of like traveling and want to see uh, different places in Japan. It's also uh, kind of a, like the economic engine of uh, Japan. So it's a big manufacturing hub and there are a lot of uh, job opportunities, uh, especially in the fields of uh, like agriculture and uh, aerospace uh, and automotive industries. And uh, of course, it's a big city, uh, similar to Tokyo or Osaka, but it's uh, I think it's a very nice place to live because it's not quite as crowded or not quite as expensive as uh, some of the other big cities in Japan. And uh, I and Queen will go into the details of uh, kind of estimations of how much it costs to live in, in uh, Nagoya a bit later on. But yeah. Overall, uh, Nagoya is a kind of a 
easy, easy place to live. Uh, then a few words about Nagoya University. So uh, Nagoya University is uh, uh, one of the top national universities in Japan. I, I just read the new, uh, I think it's the Times ranking, and uh, the Times ranking was uh, like the fourth best university in terms of research in uh, in Japan currently. So really one of the highest ranking universities in Japan. And that's also reflected in the fact that we have uh, we have gotten six Nobel Prizes, or so our researchers have been awarded six Nobel Prizes in the past uh, 20 years, uh, especially in the fields of uh, chemistry and physics. So our university is really famous for uh, research in uh, physics and chemistry and a lot of the natural science, as well as the uh, fields like automotive engineering and medicine. Uh, we are quite a large university with about uh, 16,000 students, uh, of which about 2,000 are international students. And uh, 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 the international students are dispersed into the kind of normal Japanese language programs and some, some of the other programs. Uh, as well as uh, in the G30 international programs. So this is the program I represent. And the G30 international programs offer 100% English taught uh, full degree undergraduate and graduate programs uh, at Nagoya University. So just to uh, give you a very brief uh, overview of the uh, different uh, undergraduate and graduate programs we have available in the G30 international program. Uh, here you can see uh, the undergraduate programs we have. Uh, there is uh, a program called Japan in Asia Culture Studies program, which is kind of focused on history and literature and cinema, things like that. Uh, then we have uh, two social science programs, uh, one in law and another one in economics. Uh, then we have, again, two biological science programs, one at the School of Science and one at the School of Agricultural Sciences. Uh, again, two automotive engineering programs, one in mechanical engineering and one in electrical, electronic and information engineer engineering. Uh, then we have a physics program and again, two uh, chemistry programs. So uh, we are quite a big university and we have a, quite a large uh, variety of uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, different programs in different fields, bo both in natural sciences and in social sciences. And again, these are uh, all uh, four-year uh, bachelor's degree programs uh, taught completely in English. So I think my uh, the focus of today's presentation is not really to go over uh, all the details of the G30 programs or the uh, kind of the admissions process or anything like that. I noticed that we got a lot of questions about uh, those topics uh, from in the kind of uh, registration form that you guys all filled in. Um, uh, so, but uh, I will just uh, go over briefly this section today. Uh, and uh, next month we will have a more uh, general uh, admissions uh, uh, seminar. Uh, I will advertise it at the end of this presentation. But uh, for now, if you have some questions about the, these programs or uh, about how to apply or any of the details, then again, you can ask them in the chat. Uh, but yeah, these are basically the undergraduate programs we have available in English. And then uh, we also offer uh, like 12 majors uh, in our uh, graduate program. So uh, you can see them listed here. Actually, there are even more than 12 programs because some of the programs offer both a possibility to do a master's degree or a doctoral degree. Uh, doctoral degree. So again, uh, my colleagues will probably send you some uh, links in the chat. Uh, you can go to our website and if you're interested in any of these programs, then you can read the details uh, uh, from our website. Um, but that's kind of the very brief, basic overview of uh, Nagoya University and the international programs that we offer. Uh, but let's move on to the kind of 
main section uh, of this uh, today's uh, webinar. So I think uh, uh, everybody joined here to learn more about uh, like how much the tuition is and uh, how much it costs to live in Japan. So here you can see kind of our uh, tuition and fee structure at Nagoya University. Uh, so um, when you apply, you have to pay a 5,000 yen application fee um, when you submit your application online. And uh, if you are uh, lucky enough to be admitted, uh, you need to pay a one-time registration fee. So uh, this uh, fee you only pay uh, when you enter the university during the first year. And then of course, our university has uh, tuition fees. Our uh, tuition fee is uh, 535,800 yen per year. Uh, that equals to about uh, three and a half thousand uh, US dollars in a year. And uh, that's actually quite affordable, uh, especially if you compare like the these uh, Japanese tuition fees to the tuition fees of which a lot of the other uh, uh, big countries that uh, uh, kind of uh, big destination countries for international students. So for example, uh, if you uh, compare the our Nagoya University tuition fee to the United States average international students tuition fee, you can see here that uh, our tuition fee is uh, basically 10 times lower. And uh, uh, you might think, mm, uh, does, does, is that a reflection on the quality of education or why is the tuition fee so small? And the reason is uh, because uh, Nagoya University is a national university, so we are very uh, heavily supported by the Japanese government. And uh, also currently, uh, lucky for all of you international students, the Japanese yen is at a all time low. So currently one US dollar is about 156 uh, Japanese yen mix, which currently makes uh, studying in Japan extremely affordable. And uh, uh, yeah, so we don't know how long uh, this uh, uh, low yen situation will last, but probably uh, for the next few years, uh, yeah, studying in Japan will be uh, quite affordable for uh, quite a few uh, international students. And another thing of uh, somehow uh, note is that our tuition fees are the same for the Japanese students and for the international students. So there's no extra fee for international students like there are in many countries where somehow university expects the international students to uh, pay extra. So that's not the case at Nagoya University. So uh, yeah, so those are kind of the kind of the basic tuition costs at Nagoya University. Of course, if you move to Japan, it's a big transition, and uh, you need to uh, start paying also for your living expenses. So here is uh, uh, kind of a a breakdown of some uh, living expenses that we have estimated for you. Um, actually, I have another slide here. So uh, this is a breakdown of uh, living expenses, which is made by uh, uh, JASO, which is the governmental organization for uh, uh, kind of which supports international students in Japan. So uh, according to their estimation, uh, international students can expect to pay about 93,000 yen per month for uh, like basic living expenses. So you can expend, expect uh, food to be about 30,000 yen, rent about uh, 40,000 yen uh, and so on. So uh, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, you can maybe take a quick uh, or kind of a more detailed look later after I send you the presentation. Uh, I think it's kind of smart to uh, take a look how much it would approximately be to live in Japan and uh, based on kind of a bit more solid evidence than to decide, okay, is this financially possible to me? Uh, I think this uh, 
breakdown that uh, Just So has done is quite realistic. It's uh, very much uh, in line with uh, what uh, Nagoya University has estimated, and it's also in line with what uh, uh, Queen uh, estimated. She will uh, talk about uh, about her living expenses and things like that a bit later. Uh, but yeah, this is somehow what you should uh, expect to be uh, paying uh, for just the basic expenses every month. Uh, so today I will talk about uh, scholarships mostly, uh, but of course uh, you can also work as a part-time student uh, to kind of supplement your income. So I just wanted to let you know that if you have the kind of uh, residency status, so basically a student visa, then that gives you, allows you to engage in part-time work up to 28 hours per week. So this is how much you can work at maybe at a restaurant or maybe you work at an English school. And I, I wanted to somehow emphasize that um, student visa is not suitable for people who are interested in full-time work opportunities. Sometimes student might or some people might use uh, enrolling in a university or some Japanese language school as a kind of a easy way to start working in Japan. But uh, in fact, the uh, limitation is quite strict for the working hours. So when you are a student, then you also have to be careful not to work too much and earn uh, too much money. Uh, but yeah. So then uh, let's go over some scholarship opportunities. So first I will start with the undergraduate scholarships that we have available at Nagoya University. So uh, one of the main scholarships that we offer is called the G30 scholarship. And this is only available for undergraduate students who apply to the Nagoya University G30 programs. And here you can see uh, tuition is covered uh, fully for four years as well as the registration fee. Uh, so for with this scholarship, you have to uh, pay the registration fee upfront, but it will be reimbursed to you uh, after enrollment. And in that, addition to that, you need to pay, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, you are given an annual stipend, which is about uh, 500,000 yen. So this is provided for your personal expenses uh, for the full uh, four years. Of course, the uh, we will be somehow monitoring your GPA and how much credits you get. So if your GP, GPA starts getting really bad, then uh, you might be contacted uh, that you somehow, you are in danger of losing the scholarship. But basically it's a full scholarship for the four years. Uh, however, this uh, scholarship does not cover the registration fee, I'm sorry, the application fee. Uh, yeah, so that one is uh, something you have to pay by yourself when you apply. Requirements, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you have to be eligible uh, and you have to apply to our uh, uh, G30 undergraduate programs and uh, submit the necessary documents. So this is basically just an application form and an income statement. And this income statement should come from your household provider. So for most students, that means your parents. So if both of your parents are working, then both of their income statement, if only one parent is working, then uh, one parent's income statement. And uh, the way you apply is you apply online uh, at the time of when you apply to our programs and you can uh, download all of the application documents from our online application system. Uh, so uh, when you are applying, you basically need to just click, yes, I would like to apply for a scholarship and then submit the necessary documents. So uh, applying for this scholarship is uh, relatively easy. Another scholarship that we offer uh, for the undergraduate pro, uh, students uh, is the MEXT scholarship. So this is a scholarship that I think a lot of you might be familiar with. Um, this is a, uh, basically, uh, we offer a university recommended uh, MEXT scholarship for undergraduate students. Uh, this is a very generous scholarship. It covers tuition for full four years, as well as a registration fee, 
uh, as well as the application fee. Uh, also a monthly stipend, uh, which is the, this amount. Uh, and since Nagoya is a bit ex uh, kind of a large, a little bit expensive city, then you also get a little bit extra on your scholarship uh, from MEXT. They also pay for round trip airfare. So your flight tickets from your home country to Japan. And once you finish your studies, then they will uh, pay for your tickets back to your home country. Uh, again, you just need to apply to the G30 programs. And uh, this scholarship is available uh, for uh, any country that has kind of, uh, that's designated by uh, MEXT. So generally most countries that have official diplomatic relationships with Japan are eligible for this scholarship. Uh, however, uh, for the mixed scholarships in general, for all of them, as a general rule, uh, Japanese passport holders are not eligible uh, for mixed scholarship. So if you're a Japanese citizen, uh, then you are welcome to apply to the G30 international programs, but unfortunately you are not eligible for this mixed scholarship. Uh, also dual citizens should be a bit careful with the mixed scholarship because if you get caught having uh, like having two passports as an adult by the Japanese government, you might lose your Japanese nationality. So. Uh, this is somehow a caveat that I would like to uh, say to all dual citizens. Again, uh, you apply uh, the same way as for the G30 undergraduate scholarship, um, just uh, uh, when you apply for our program in general. Then next one, here we have the JASA scholarship. So this is a scholarship I think some of you might also be familiar with. It's a Japanese government scholarship. Uh, the monthly stipend is a bit smaller. It's uh, 48,000 yen per month. It's six months to a year. And you can also apply for an extension of this scholarship. So I will be interested to hear from Quinn uh, who got this scholarship, uh, like the how she applied and uh, uh, if uh, if she's planning to apply for an extension. Uh, this one is uh, generally always uh, kind of handled by each university by themselves. And the uh, Japanese government kind of gives, I think, slots per university. Like each university has this many just scholarships that they can give to international students. So uh, Nagoya University has quite uh, many slots. So uh, last year, 100 international students were given uh, this JASA scholarship. So uh, the requirements to apply for these scholarships, um, this is for privately financed international students. So if you already have a mixed scholarship, so you can't get this, you need to have uh, like high enough GPA uh, and uh, you need to kind of prove that you are in financial need. Uh, this scholarship is quite nice because it's available both for the undergraduate students and graduate students. So also uh, master and PhD program uh, applicants can apply for this scholarship. Again, uh, Japanese nationals and permanent resident holders, unfortunately, are not eligible to apply. Uh, and uh, there are minimum GPA as well as Japanese or English proficiency requirements. So you need to submit either like uh, uh, Japanese, uh, probably uh, Nihongo Noryoku Shiken, the N2 uh, certificate, or uh, one one of the big uh, English proficiency test scores, like your, like your TOEFL score or something, when you apply for this scholarship. And the way you apply, you apply through the university after enrollment. So um, unlike the two previous scholarships that you apply uh, uh, when you apply for the program in general, uh, this is something uh, that you have to do after enrollment. And uh, yeah, most of the scholarships I, or quite a few of the scholarships I will talk about uh, today are scholarships that you apply for after the 
after you have been admitted to the university. Um, yes, so, uh, yep, so you need to submit your basic application documents as well as uh, your Japanese bank book. So since this uh, scholarship is based on financial need, then you need to show uh, just so your financial situation uh, to um, so they can figure out if you need the scholarship or not. So that's basically it for the JASO scholarship. Uh, there is one kind of a, kind of a special JASO scholarship. Actually, there are several types of JASO scholarships, but one quite special one is this uh, e, EJU uh, scholarship. So um, they offer, JASO offers, uh, uh, kind of a special scholarships uh, for students who have achieved a high score on the examination for Japanese university admission for international students, which uh, generally is always called uh, EJU. Uh, and uh, this test uh, is administered by the Japanese government uh, in Japan and also internationally in several different countries. Uh, this is not a requirement uh, when you apply to the G30 international programs, uh, but uh, it's a good chance and kind of an opportunity to get an extra scholarship. So uh, if if you are kind of academically gifted, then I definitely recommend uh, trying uh, to take this uh, EJU test. So uh, this uh, awards basically the same 48,000 justice scholarship as the one I uh, introduced before, uh, but it offers it for a longer time. So I think uh, it offers it basically for the full four years of undergraduate studies. And this is a scholarship that you can, uh, you can get on top of other scholarships. So uh, here they don't consider your like other financial situation. This is based, this is like a merit-based uh, scholarship. So it's just based on your, uh, on this uh, EJU scores. And uh, so the requirements is, so you need to take the EJU test. Uh, when you take the test, uh, you can kind of choose which section you take. So uh, there's a possibility to do some of the sections in English. So I think there are like mathematics and science sections, which kind of test the Japanese standard of uh, high school knowledge in, in specific subjects. But you can take the test in English. Uh, but uh, there's also a Japanese language section and... Uh, uh, you can also take the tests in Japanese if your Japanese is high enough. And uh, yeah, uh, if you score well, uh, you might be awarded this scholarship. So every year, a few students, a few of our undergraduate students get, get this kind of extra scholarship, usually on top of their other uh, scholarships. So uh, the way you apply is you need to apply to take the exam uh, and uh, uh, and if you get a good score, then the uh, uh, this uh, uh, EGU organization uh, will contact you and offer you uh, a possibility to get this scholarship. Uh, but uh, you can uh, read more about it uh, in this link, and maybe my colleagues will also send you a link in the chat. Good. We have quite a few scholarships here to go through. Um, I wanted to pack this presentation with that, as uh, many uh, kind of scholarship op opportunities for you as I could. So another big scholarship that we offer for our uh, undergraduate uh, students is called the uh, Jugas Scholarship. So uh, this is especially for Singaporean student. Uh, it's um, awarded by the a organization called Japanese University Graduates Association of Singapore. And uh, this offers the uh, uh, very like high potential Singaporean students the opportunity to study uh, at Nagoya University. So we have kind of a uh, agreement with this organization uh, 
So if Singaporean students want, want to apply to Nagoya University, they can apply for this scholarship. Again, it's quite a generous scholarship. Um, uh, there's an allowance, 500,000 uh, yen uh, per year, 100% uh, tuition waiver, uh, as well as they pay for the application fee and the registration fee, as well as uh, your uh, flight tickets to and from uh, uh, Singapore to uh, Japan. So uh, again, you have to um, be eligible to apply to the G30 programs. Uh, this is for the undergraduate programs and you must be a Singaporean citizen. So uh, this is a specific uh, uh, scholarship for Singaporean people and maybe it doesn't apply for everybody, but I wanted to introduce it um, because we have this uh, special agreement, but I also wanted to introduce it to kind of encourage everybody to like check in your own countries uh, like organizations, a lot of different countries have uh, big companies that might give out uh, scholarships, like there's a scholarship uh, called Impex in uh, Indonesia. Uh, it's a big oil company that gives out big scholarship for studying in Japan. Uh, I will uh, introduce the fast re retailing uh, scholarship in Vietnam uh, next. So each country might also have kind of country specific scholarships that I uh, kind of encourage you to um, uh, research because there actually are quite a lot of opportunities also in uh, various countries. To apply for the uh, Juga scholarship, uh, it's a paper-based uh, application. Um, uh, you can go to the Juga's website uh, for more information if you are from Singapore. Again, another kind of uh, scholarship that's specifically uh, for a certain country is the Fast Retailing Scholarship. Uh, this supports aspiring and ardent Vietnamese students who wish to study at Japanese universities. Um, this is offered by the big uh, kind of clothing uh, manufacturing company, Uniqlo. This is a Japanese company. Uh, and they offer this scholarship specifically to Vietnamese students, uh, but they are also planning to launch uh, this scholarship in some other countries, perhaps uh, in uh, Indonesia, uh, but that's not uh, being decided yet. This is a also very generous scholarship, uh, tuition fully covered, allowance, uh, is uh, this much depending on the region. Nagoya uh, probably uh, is in the higher uh, bracket here. Uh, it also covers airfare allowance as well as overseas travel in uh, insurance for the duration of your studies. Um, so you can uh, uh, read more about the requirements for this uh, scholarship. Uh, you need to submit all sorts of paperwork. I think there's an interview also. And again, you need to be a, a Vietnam citizen. So yeah, so you can, you can uh, register online to uh, receive the application form by email uh, during the designated application period. Um, one thing I would like to mention about this scholarship and about scholarships in general is that uh, quite a lot of scholarships are uh, you need to apply for in advance. So maybe a year in advance, like a year before you uh, um, can start your studies at a specific university, you might need to start applying for scholarships. So uh, this is something I would like you to keep in mind to start early, like scanning for different scholarships and checking their application periods. Uh, because uh, like this scholarship is a scholarship which you can get after or during high school already. And uh, you already uh, have this scholarship before you even apply to Nagoya University. So this one, uh, like the application period is I think uh, sometime in autumn. And then our application period starts in November, and then our like academic year starts next year in October. So you 
after you apply and get the scholarship, you might have to wait quite a long time. So uh, like uh, Japanese uh, organizations uh, do things quite early and uh, are very strict about deadlines and things. So uh, this is uh, another recommendation I give to you about scholarships also. Okay, so those were our uh, undergraduate scholarships. Let's talk a little bit about uh, graduate school scholarships. So um, again, uh, there are so many choices actually, I don't even have time to go over all of the details of all of the scholarships, but I would like you to uh, guide you to this website. This is the Nagoya University Doctoral Educational Consortium. They have a very uh, beautiful website. And on that website, you can find this uh, list of different scholarships and uh, kind of uh, financial support options for uh, specifically for uh, graduate students. So I recommend you to scan this QR code or go to this uh, link here uh, after this presentation uh, to check out some of the details. I will uh, introduce like the biggest scholarships uh, that are introduced in this one. Uh, in the following few, few slides. So um, uh, probably the most famous scholarship is this uh, mixed research student scholarship. Uh, so uh, this is actually the scholarship I was on when I did my PhD here at Nagoya University. Uh, so it's a, a very nice uh, scholarship offered by the Japanese government. Uh, it covers tuition. Uh, initially, it covers tuition for the first two years, and after that, you apply for extension if you, for example, are a PhD student, and uh, this one is generally always granted, so it's a full scholarship for your full uh, how many years you study, basically. Uh, it uh, also covers registration fee, the application fee, as well as a monthly stipend, and the amount of the monthly stipend will depend on whether you are a um, master student or a PhD student, and again, you get a little bit uh, additional uh, scholarship each month uh, since Nagoya is a big city. They pay a round trip airfare uh, between your home country and Japan. And the nice thing about this scholarship is that you are also allowed to spend the first six months in Japan studying Japanese. Uh, or even a year. So what I did when I had this scholarship is I did one year of what's called research student uh, studies and I studied Japanese and I was doing my research and after that I officially applied and enrolled into my PhD program. So I, I was on this scholarship uh, four years in total. Uh, so requirements, um, uh, both master and doctoral program students uh, are eligible to apply. And uh, again, uh, international students are eligible, but the Japanese passport holders, unfortunately, are not. Uh, in this scholarship, there is an age limit. So quite often we get uh, people asking, is there an age limit to apply to the G30 international programs? Uh, no, there isn't. But for some scholarships, there is sometimes like uh, kind of a maximum age limit. So for this scholarship, uh, it's uh, you have to be born after 1990. So you can't be like over 35 to get this scholarship. And the way you apply, there are two tracks uh, for this scholarship. You can uh, apply for the embassy recommended track uh, through the Japanese embassy in your own home country. Uh, this is what I did. Uh, or you can apply. Uh, like ask for the av availability of university recommended mixed scholarship. And that will depend uh, on your department at Nagoya University. So um, uh, there are only a few, maybe two or three uh, university recommended uh, graduate level, these research student mixed scholarship awarded in Nagoya University each year. And not all departments will be given a scholarship every year. So it kind of depends on your luck if you can even apply for it uh, when on the year that you apply to Nagoya University. Uh, and the way uh, you apply is that you need to contact your master or PhD supervisor and ask them if they can recommend you to their department to be the university recommended mixed uh, scholar. 
So yeah, that's uh, kind of the difference between the embassy recommended and the university recommended MEX scholarship. Then we have the Nagoya University WISE program scholarships. Uh, this is the doctoral program for world leading innovative and smart education uh, program. Uh, this is a, a program that aims to kind of educate uh, very uh, top level researchers in some specific fields. So uh, there are four different programs which are written here. Uh, uh, which uh, kind of cover some specific uh, fields uh, that the Japanese government wants to focus on, kind of key fields in the industry. So uh, there's, a, for example, this uh, uh, collaborative graduate program for accelerating innovation in future electronics. So uh, these are also kind of... Um, like uh, encourage um, interdisciplinary research. And um, um, I don't go into the details of each program here, but I encourage you to go, if, to go to this website to check if the thing you are interested in doing research in has anything to do with these uh, topics. Uh, you can find kind of details on this website like which majors uh, uh, can apply for each of these uh, scholarships. So I can just show you that uh, the four programs, uh, they have, they offer a bit uh, different uh, kind of uh, scholarship amount is a bit different. So uh, for example, this uh, first uh, program, uh, it offers, uh, and most of these programs they are kind of structures in a way where you can do, you kind of commit to doing two years of master research in uh, one of these specific fields and then a PhD on top of that. So uh, these are kind of aimed for people who, who are really serious about research and want to do both master's degree and a PhD degree. And uh, during the first and second year of master, Generally, you get a bit uh, smaller scholarship. And once you uh, graduate and go into PhD, you get a bit higher uh, scholarship or in some cases salary. So you might be required to do uh, kind of research assistant work. And some of the scholarships also have uh, like, uh, uh, like a special uh, uh, part which... Uh, can be used for like research expenses or travel expenses or participation fees for uh, participating in international uh, conferences. So some of these programs also offer a bit of research money. That was one of the questions I also got from uh, some of the people is, is, are there any scholarships that also offer uh, like research funding? So uh, this one offers uh, kind of a little bit of research funding. Uh, but yes, again, uh, uh, check this website to see if what you're interested in studying uh, matches one of these uh, four programs and see if you're uh, uh, eligible to apply. I heard from the people who are running this program that actually they feel they don't get enough applications and would like to receive more applications. So yeah, if if your research interest matches one of these topics, I think you might have a good chance of getting a, quite a nice scholarship. Then there is the JSPS Research Fellowship for Young Scientists. This is again a Japanese government scholarship. Uh, and uh, uh, there are different types of uh, JSPS uh, scholarships. Um, for uh, these uh, scholarships are mostly aimed for doctoral students as well as postdoctoral researchers. So uh, here you can see the uh, the scholarships are quite high. Uh, it's basically postdoctoral researchers a scholarship is is like a. Uh, it's like a salary, like a normal worker's salary in Japan. Uh, and uh, these uh, scholarships or fellowships, uh, they also offer a research grant. So this is a bit higher research grant. 
it's for doing really serious uh, like uh, postdoctoral level research. And uh, this is a nice uh, scholarship because all fields in humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences are eligible up to apply, unlike the VICE pro program, which is kind of specific for certain fields. Uh, this is open for both Japanese researchers and international researchers. So now if you have a Japanese nationality, you are welcome to apply for this one. Uh, of course, because also Japanese students are or researchers are eligible to apply. It means this is a very competitive program and uh, it's preferable to already have published some peer-reviewed research papers. Uh, that's somehow not the strict minimum requirement, but kind of the uh, practical minimum requirement is that you already have some merits in research to get this scholarship. Uh, there is also a specific scholarship for international uh, uh, researchers, uh, which you can find here. Um, again, uh, you can go to their websites to read more about the different types of scholarships they have available for doctoral and postdoctoral researchers. Uh, the application is uh, quite simple, application document, research plan, also a budget plan, as well as an academic evaluation from your current research supervisor. Good. Then just a few words about scholarships after enrollment. Um, um, I will show you a list of different uh, like private scholarships we have available, but I also wanted to mention that Nagoya University offers a tuition waiver. So this is generally between 50 to 100% of the uh, tuition fee. And uh, I would say that the 50% tuition waiver is relatively easy to get as an international student because the way this tuition waiver system works, it looks at your, uh, like, uh, your family's household income and uh, how much tuition waiver um, you get is based on your own salary and your parents' salary if they live in Japan. Uh, but since you're a student, probably you, you don't have a lot of salary. And uh, like the salary of the international student's parents is not calculated in this sum if the parents live abroad. So based on that, most of the international students maybe uh, uh, don't have uh, so much income and uh, Hence, it's kind of relatively easy to get the scholarship compared to the Japanese students whose uh, uh, parents' income who live in Japan is uh, kind of uh, looked at when deciding whether you can get the tuition waiver or not. Uh, full tuition waiver is quite difficult to get. It's granted only for special cases such as illness or childbirth. Uh, also, if you uh, take exchange, uh, you study abroad, you might get a tuition uh, waiver. Uh, and then if for some reason you are not given a tuition waiver or during some semester you are not given a tuition waiver, then the university also offers non-interest short-term loans. So this is about uh, the university can offer you like uh, 50,000 yen uh like small loans, which you have to pay back in the next three months. So uh, this is also a good option. If when you come to Nagoya University, even if you have gotten a scholarship, then sometimes it takes some time for the paperwork to uh, be handled. And it might take some time for the money to come to your bank account. And in that case, uh, it's okay to apply for one of these non-interest short-term loans. Requirements, uh, so as I uh, mentioned, um, you this is kind of a need-based uh, scholarship. So you need to uh, offer uh, or you need to submit uh, like uh, some of your personal financial information uh, things uh, such as uh, like your part-time job inter income certificates your income tax return um, certificates 
as well as some information about scholarship that you are already receiving uh, and so on to kind of show you uh, show your current uh, financial uh, situation. Um, yeah, and this uh, application will also occur after the enrollment, so uh, either in October or in April. And uh, one thing that you need to be prepared is that uh, you need to be prepared to uh, undertake a detailed interview concerning your uh, financial status uh, when you apply. Uh, then a few work, words about uh, working part-time for the university. So uh, you can work part-time for the university as a teaching assistant or a tutor, a research assistant or uh, like a G30 ambassador. So Queen Sun, who is joining us today, uh, uh, she has been hired by the admissions office to be a G30 ambassador. And uh, this is something that's great. Of course, you can get some part-time salary. But I think uh, uh, one of the really important things is also that you can gain really valuable working experience, uh, which can help you uh, land a job after graduation. So when I was a student at Nagoya University, I used to work a lot of different part-time uh, jobs for the university. And that really helped me when I did uh, job hunting. And uh, actually, instead of uh, doing a regular postdoc, after graduation, I got uh, a full-time permanent position at another university just based on like the uh, quite uh, active part-time work that I had done at Nagoya University. So yeah, so you can do teaching assistant or research assistant. Research assistants mostly work at uh, specific labs. Maybe your professor might have some, uh, there's some like regular work that needs to be done at, at your research lab. So uh, uh, that's uh, like a, uh, one opportunity. Uh, then yes, us at the G30 admissions office, we hire students uh, to host campus tours or appear in social media videos. Uh, we also hire students to tutor the new students during orientation and uh, things like that. Uh, quite a few students nowadays uh, work for the Nagoya University English as a medium of instruction project where the international students help the Japanese students to take part in the uh, English uh, G30 courses. So sometimes the Japanese students might struggle with their English a little bit. Uh, so they need a little bit of extra support, and that's uh, offered by the international students. And this is also uh, work which I did, and it gave me a lot of like useful kind of teaching experience already when I was a student. And uh, uh, the way you, uh, you apply, I think uh, these are jobs that are coming and going, and uh, we will kind of upload it, uh, the kind of advertisements on our social media and various other uh, places, uh, sent them by emails and things. Uh, but uh, to get uh, some of these on-campus jobs, it pays to be active. So we usually always somehow hire the same students that are usually active. So Queen Sun in a minute will talk about her experience working for the university. And she's also a student who has been kind of a uh, repeat offender uh, and uh, taking taking a part in a lot of our activities. So uh, yeah, don't be shy to ask your own professor or uh, contact uh, the NU EMI project people or us at the admissions office to see if there's any help we might need. Um, we really appreciate uh, uh, kind of active students at Nagoya University. Uh, but let's hear from, oh, there we go. Uh, I wanted to already give the stage to Queen Sun, but uh, I, I still had a few slides. So uh, in addition to all of these scholarships that I talked about, there are many <laughs> external scholarships. So again, I encourage you to check out uh, JASSO's website. You can scan the QR code or my colleagues can send you the link. Uh, there is a long list of different uh, scholarship like uh, private and public that you can check here. Also, um, our university has uh, uh, this always NU, always Nagoya University website, which lists 
uh, again, a very long list of scholarships. Um, I really wanted to talk about all of these, but uh, we simply don't have time. But uh, as you can see, I mean, uh, like somehow the message I want to give to everybody today is even if you don't get the G30 uh, undergraduate scholarship or the mixed undergraduate scholarship or the mixed uh, research student scholarship uh, before you apply to Nagoya University, then uh, I want you to know that there are a lot of other scholarship opportunities. Uh, and uh, even if you don't get a full scholarship for the full four years, then by combining various other kind of smaller scholarship, then uh, as well as like things like part-time work, then you can live a very comfortable kind of exciting fun life here in uh, Nagoya. Uh, I think I, I interviewed a lot of the G30 students before the, I, I started making this presentation and everybody that I talked to, like all the G30 students, uh, they had some kind of scholarship and most of them had one or two or maybe even three scholarships. So uh, like, I want you to not to give up on your dream. So even, even if you uh, like uh, didn't get the two main scholarships that we give during admission or then then don't don't give up. Uh, there are still a lot of opportunities here at Nagoya University to kind of uh, balance your finances. And luckily at this time, the yen is low. So uh, living in Japan is quite affordable. There is a, yet another website, uh, Nagoya University Mado, Mado is window in Japanese, uh, where there are kind of more uh, up-to-date uh, information, I think, these these are uh, just uh, kind of when a new new scholarship comes up, then they will upload it here. So uh, yeah, after this presentation, I will send all these files to you, so you can you can check some of some of the links and uh, uh, take a look how many <laughs> scholarship opportunities there actually are here at Nagoya University. But uh, we are almost out of time. But I would like to. Uh, uh, give the stage to Queen San. Uh, uh, if uh, any of you have some other uh, place to be, it's already 3 p.m. Uh, um, I will uh, again send you the recording of this video, and you can um, look what uh, or you can watch what's Queen's uh, section then. But if you still have a, a few minutes, then please stay and listen to uh, a real student's experience. And after that, we will answer some questions. So, uh, but yeah, Quinn, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, the stage is yours. Thank I you. Will I will unpin myself. Let's see. Okay, okay. I will, I will pin you. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. There we go. Yes. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, uh, admissions office, and also thank you, Sagaguchi-san, for having me today and also introducing me. Um, I'm very happy and excited to be here today to introduce you guys about myself and also my experience at Nagoya University up until now. So first, let me have a, a short introduction about myself. My name is Quinn. I'm currently a third-year student at School of Economics, Nagoya University. I'm from Vietnam, and currently I have been living in Nagoya for two years. Regarding scholarships, ah, yes, next page, please. Okay, um, regarding scholarships, personally, this is um, I believe that admissions office have done a very clear way in explaining all the all of the scholarships, but this is also just my thoughts on how the scholarship types have been divided. Um, the first one, pretty much very most common, government funded scholarship max. Um, the second one is university funded T thirty. I personally got T thirty scholarship and. I applied for this scholarship during the application process to the university and the scholarships just got announced to me at the time together with the admission letter. And the last one is, I believe this one is 
have been becoming more and more common recently, which is privately funded scholarships from companies. A lot of Japanese companies, international organizations, or Japanese organizations aiming at international exchange and cultural exchange have been providing a lot of scholarships recently. There are many, and when you enter the university, as uh, Sakaguchi-san has mentioned, there would be a lot of websites for you to get access to the information of the scholarships, and then you could apply. It. One benefits of having privately funded company scholarships is that usually they will have networking events at the end of the scholarship period so that you can have a chance to meet with a lot of even Japanese big company CEOs or other recipients of scholarships. And I believe it is a very good chance for you to networking and also talk to people. Um, usually for privately funded scholarships, having Japanese proficiency can be pretty much very helpful as some of the application process requires you to enter and also fill in the form, sometimes having interviews in Japanese. Yes, and however, one cons of privately funded scholarships is that it's usually short term, around one year or maximum two years. So you might have to apply it several times instead of just like university funded one that you applied once and you can have it for four years of your study. Yes, next slide please. For scholarships that I receive, I personally very, I'm very grateful to have been receiving now like university cheater scholarships. We've covered my tuitions for four years as well as a stipend of 500,000 yen per year. So approximately each month I have around 40,000 yen per month and i also get an i also got another scholarship called mugishima scholarship which is a private institution's aims at promoting japanese and um other countries connections and it's provided me with 50000 yen per month of scholarships together with um but only for a year and also Usually for TRD scholarships, the maximums of the amount of other scholarships that you're allowed to receive is 50,000 yen, just to note. And I also got lucky to got Mugishima scholarship. Um, just to also mention that although I actually received JASO scholarship, but because during the time it was COVID, so I wasn't allowed to enter Japan yet. And because of that, after I got allowed to join go to join into Japan, my scholar, my JASO scholarship expired as well. So I didn't actually got the money for JASO scholarship. But I believe that now as Corona has gone, everything should be back to normal now. Yes, next slide, please. And um, last one I want to mention is this is just my personal experience of how my life living in Nagoya is currently like for um each month i spent around 40000 to 50000 on rent um this includes the rent you pay to the companies as well as the insurance fee that you have to pay for the insurance companies then i would have to pay for utilities including electricity and water and gas for approximately 10000 it could be a little bit higher during the winter as you might use more heater and air conditioner but during the the fall season or spring seasons then the money would be a little bit lower for groceries i then spent around 30000 to 40000 depending on months and last ones is others such as commuting expenses or <clears throat> when i have to, when i hang out with my friends and also other related stuff in total, for per month, I spent around 100,000 to 120,000 yen for leaving pretty much. I believe that my life here in Japan is pretty much comfortable. So I guess that's the amount that's pretty comfortable here. I, In order to supplement on that, regard, besides scholarships, I also work a bit of part-time jobs. Uh, for example, I work at the university in NUE in my sessions. Um, applications for NUE and my Nella University uh, English as a medium. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't remember the name very 
clear. But in English, that, I say medium of instruction. Ah, medium of instructions. That's um, you would I have to apply it every semester, but the process have been nice, and I personally think that this is a very nice chance for you to have teaching experience as well as talking to Japanese students right on campus. So I believe it is a very nice opportunity. I also worked some from short term internship, uh, short term part time jobs as English teaching at English schools or daycare facilities, just to mention. Yes. So that's pretty much my monthly expenditure and also how I try to balance my school, school life, working life, and also to have fun at Nagoya University. Personally, for me, I believe that Nagoya University has been offering me with a lot of nice opportunities. I have many chances to get in touch with many nice people and also receive a lot of help from the professors and also from the admissions office, the school office, in order for me, for me to have the most comfortable life that I can have right now during my university life. So I hope you guys can get a chance to experience it. And also through my short talk, you can a little bit understand more about how life in Nagoya is like. Thank you. And I'm here open to any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Queen. I'm so happy to hear you have had such a positive experience <laughs> and very impressed by how many scholarships you have received. So basically, uh, you have uh, you received three different scholarships and uh, I'm sure if, if you applied for even uh, for a few more, you might uh, get a few more. So that's really great. Um, uh, yeah, we are a bit running over time, but I would still like to kind of uh, open the stage for the students' questions. Um, let's see, just a moment. There we go. Um, yes. So uh, just uh, very quickly, um, uh, everybody left a lot of questions in the Google Forms uh, form that uh, you filled out. And uh, quite a many of the questions were about like general admissions questions, but there were also uh, uh, questions uh, related to scholarships, of course. So let me just uh, give very quick answers to these Google Form questions. So any scholarship programs for foreigners who currently are living in Japan? Yes. Most of the scholarships I introduced are also available for foreigners uh, currently living in Japan. Uh, some of them might be limited by permanent residency. So if you have a permanent residency, then some of the government scholarships uh, you can't apply for. Um, will there be uh, less of a chance of receiving the G30 scholarship if I apply in the second round? Uh, mostly no. Uh, yeah, usually the departments will will have generally two scholarships to give. One they usually give in the uh, first round and another in the second round, but it depends each year. Is there a minimum GPA requirement for to apply for scholarships? Um, for our G30 and mixed scholarships, no, but the, the JASO scholarship, there was a minimum GPA. I think Quinn uh, San mentioned something really important, which is I forgot to mention, is that for the a lot of the private scholarships, uh, yeah, Japanese language ability is really important. Uh, you might have to write your application in Japanese. Uh, so if you're good at using Deep L and stuff like that, that will be helpful. You might have an interview also in Japanese. So uh, that's something I forgot to mention. It's uh, yeah helpful. Uh, can I work part-time and pay for living costs in Nagoya? Yes, of course. So I mentioned uh, with the student visa, you are allowed to work 25, uh, 28 hours a week. And uh, can I apply for mixed under embassy track and university track? Both are uh, uh, accepted. So does the scholarship cover uh, all or part of the living expenses. Uh, I think Queen gave a really nice like a breakdown of the 
how much the scholarship covers of the living expenses. And somebody was asking about the uh, scholarships for PhD with living expenses and research grant. So the JSPS uh, scholarship is the best scholarship in for PhD uh, because it comes also with quite a large research grant. Good. Okay, so I think those were those were the general questions uh, uh, which we received in Google Forms. Um, oh, excuse me. Yeah. So this is something uh, before we go into the main uh, Q and A session. I wanted to mention is that uh, a lot of the questions, most of the questions we received were general admissions related questions, which we are happy to answer, but we don't have quite enough time today to answer them. So we decided that uh, since it seems that a lot of people are starting to get interested to learn more about the G30, especially the undergraduate admissions process, and I think we will hold a general admissions webinar on June 13th, uh, at 2 p.m., so during this same time. And uh, during that time, uh, I will go over a bit more details about the different programs, like the academic schedule, the curriculum, as well as how to apply details of uh, how to submit all your admissions uh, application documents and what's required to apply. So uh, if uh, through this presentation or in general, you became interested in perhaps applying to the G30 international programs, then uh, I recommend you to register to also for this next seminar. It will be held on June 13th. And uh, as with this seminar, we will uh, give it here live. Uh, but uh, if you can't join on that day, then you can still register and uh, we will send you a uh, link to the recording just like today. And uh, I think we will update the uh, presentation for the next time. But if you somehow are curious to uh, get a basic understanding of the admissions process, then you can also uh, go to our YouTube channel, Nagoya G30, to watch our like general admissions seminar from last year. Uh, but the updated uh, version is coming in uh, one month. So uh, yeah, please register. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, open the stage for uh, a few questions. So, uh, if anybody wants to ask a question, you can raise your hand and uh, I think I can open your mic, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think the admissions office has been already answer answering quite a few of your questions in the chat. But uh, if there's something you uh, want to ask me, kind of it's easier to uh, speak rather than write, then, uh, yeah, uh, please raise your hand in the in the Zoom webinar. Anybody? Oh, there is, uh, okay. Let's me see. Uh, I will, oh, this is very difficult to use. Oh, let's see. Um, I will try to give you. Okay, so I think, yeah, go ahead and uh, can you can you say something, uh, Sri Devi? Good good afternoon. Oh, hello. Good, it's working. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Is sure. there any age limit uh, to apply for these uh, scholarships, for especially for postdoctorate course scholarships? Um. Yes, so the the mixed uh, scholarships which I introduced, they have an age limit for the JSPS uh, scholarships. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think there should be because they are meant more for researchers or if there is, it's probably going to be quite high. Uh, I don't have a... a, a uh, I can't con confirm uh, that for the JSP scholarship, but uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, uh, actually, I'm uh, in India. Yes. 
I am uh, working as a head of international affairs. If mm -hmm. any of the faculty is interested in our college to collaborate with uh, uh, Nagoya University for any research fellowship or young scientist fellowship, can we do it from here itself from uh, my own country? Or should I want to come a uh, full-time uh, scholar for Nagoya University? Ah, that's also a good question. Mm. Let me think a little bit. How about the admissions office? Do you have any experience? I have never heard of that. Like generally, the I know several international uh, researchers who have gotten the JSPS scholarship, and uh, they they generally have like a, like a PI at a or you you absolutely have to have a PI, a primary uh, investigator. You're like postdoc supervisor in a university in Japan but uh, like in terms of if you are required to physically stay in Japan I'm not quite sure about that for like the mixed scholarships and um, just a scholarship for the undergraduate scholarship um, the way it works you have to sign every month but I don't think the JSPS, the postdoctoral scholarships, are monitored in that way. Um, we are looking for uh, international research collaboration. Uh, uh, so that I have a doubt for doing research grants. Is there any possibility to get grant in aid uh, for my institution? Many of the faculty members are also interested to collaborate with uh, international universities. Mm. Ah uh, yes, in that a, way. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Mm, I mean, um, so the way the JSPS is a it's a specific scholarship meant for young researchers doing research in Japan. I think that's somehow what it's meant for. However, in ad, like JSPS, the scholarship is uh, awarded by the Kakenhi Institution in Japan. And the Kakenhi Institution is the big national governmental institution that uh, hands out all of the research funding. And uh, so they uh, hand out a lot of different types of research funding and all uh, like faculty, people who have a faculty position in Japan are eligible to apply for Kakenhi funding. So if you wanted to get uh, like research funding uh, for your institution for like some collaborative research, you would need to ha find a like uh, a Japanese professor who wants to do research collaboration with you and they would apply for the Kakenhi funding. And uh, yeah, those are quite large scale uh, funding for yeah serious research uh, not for students but i think something that uh, you are somehow looking for so yeah you can uh, i would recommend you to look into uh, like uh, how to apply for kakenhi maybe that would be my recommendation oh yes thank you so much will you, thank you. Uh, uh, help us to collaborate uh, with that is i'm working in kpr college of arts and science in india mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, to have a collaboration with uh, uh, your university. Uh, so we for to have a collaboration, international collaboration mm -hmm. for uh, faculty and student exchange and research fellowships and for uh, uh, research collaboration programs. We are very much interested mm. to collaborate with international universities. Yeah. What is mm. the procedure to collaborate with Nagoya University? Uh, so the uh, process is uh, generally like international research is uh, like uh, kind of one by one uh, between research groups. So generally the, the professor will have a personal relationship with other research programs abroad. Like university level uh, research collaboration is uh, not handled by the admissions office, but it's handled by the like... Uh, I don't know the English name for it, the kind of uh, uh, more of the general international affairs uh, uh, 
office. Uh, Minora-san, uh, do you remember what's the name? Yeah. Koksai so, Koryuka? Okay. Uh, Koksai Renkeka, International Koksai. Affairs Office. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so like uh, for university-wide uh, partnership ag agreement, the, another office in charge of like dealing with... Um, dealing with that and um and i also shared a link of a uh, jsps um fellowship programs and um yeah it sounds like a jsps offered um um different kind of fellowship programs as well as a, a research grant according to career stages so i think each like um different program might have uh, like a regular re requirement a different requirement so please check it out um before yeah. actually moving forward so, yes thank you thank you thanks I thank you so much minora san for sending the links that's very useful uh yeah did that answer your question yeah thank you thank you okay thank you so much are there any other questions so if you're interested in asking a question you can uh, raise your hand just a moment <laughs> um, Okay, okay, just, uh, yeah, okay, Acer is the next person. So let me just, okay, Acer, uh, please go ahead. What's your question? Oh, are you muted? So uh, Acer, you can uh, turn on your mic now and uh, speak. How about uh, how about uh, Nana Nana San? Hi, konnichiwa. Hi. Konnichiwa. Good afternoon to Hello. everyone. Yes, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my question is just about the general admission. Think about the referee a part in the. In the application portal, uh, you are being asked to inform the referees to indicate the, the I think the admission or application number which which start from G. Mm -hmm. I don't know at what stage is this a uh, number given. Ah yes yes yeah thank you. Uh, so uh, that's given after you have paid the application fee. So uh, before that, you have kind of a long ID. And uh, once you have uh, paid the application fee, then you are given the official uh, application number. Uh, and uh, after we you have paid the application fee, then we here at the admissions office will start checking your documents. So uh, yeah, like the sooner you uh, um, uh, make the application fee payment for the 5,000 yen, the sooner uh, we start processing your application and uh, this this number you can also use in in various sections during the application period okay, okay. then please about the application fee can it be is it can can it be paid before submitting the this application or the final submission on the application portal or is it after the submitting uh, you should you should uh, in in general you should uh, first submit all uh, all of the application documents that are required to the online application system, and then uh, then pay the application fee. So don't leave any section uh, empty okay. if you are waiting for some documents. Um, however, uh, you can if if you are sending some uh, documents to us by post then you can uh, you can pay the application fee before the application document has arrived us by post so uh you don't you don't have to wait all that time uh but yeah like everything that can be uploaded electronically to the application system should be done before paying the application fee okay yeah thank you very much good thank you any other questions
Okay, uh, then uh, uh, we go to the uh, next next one. Uh, so, uh, Palmadio uh, San, uh, Palmadio Praditia. Uh, uh, go ahead. What's your question? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, I wanted to ask. Uh, probably very general question but mm -hmm. because i'm not rare uh really well rounded in this like scholarship and stuff mm -hmm. i'm not really know what to do for context i'm actually a freshman i'm currently at my second semester i'm currently majoring in communication and okay. i was wondering if i were if it were possible to apply for the business and economics uh, program since I'm currently majoring in communication and currently on my second semester. Mm -hmm. So are you interested in applying to the undergraduate program? Uh, yeah, uh, it's the only program that I eligible to yes. apply, right? The mm -hmm. undergraduate. Okay, yes, so exactly. It were possible. So I want to yeah. ask about mm -hmm. that. Uh, just that because I'm not really I've just gotten interested in scholarship and stuff and I'm not really well rounded in this sort of thing so yeah, yeah. thank you very much it's uh, nice to hear you are prepare preparing early so that's really great uh, to answer your question um, uh, yes uh, like even even if you are already in university and have done a uh, few years of university studies, you are welcome to apply to any of our G30 uh, undergraduate programs. Uh, maybe a good fit for you might be our the economics program, which is under social sciences, uh, uh, the Japan in Asia culture studies program might be also interesting for you if you're majoring communications, because they do uh, like film studies, journalism, uh, those kinds of things uh, there. And uh, yeah, uh, but even even if you are, if you have done a few semesters at uh, another university, which is quite common for our applicants, then we still uh, mainly ask you to submit uh, your like high school transcripts. And also your reference letters need to come from your high school teachers. So uh, whatever uh, extra activities you have done at university can be submitted as kind of uh, supplementary information uh, in a section called documents showing other strengths. But the main application documents uh, need to come from high school. So that's uh, just something that you should keep in mind. Um, uh, do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, is the is the Q and A session will be recorded as well for the video? I wanted to review really it again. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, so I will upload this whole seminar as one video on YouTube and and send it to everybody. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Good. Um. Any other questions? So if you have a question, you can raise your hand uh, in the webinar and uh, I will open your mic. So I already once tried to open the mic for uh, Acer, A-C-E-R. Um, uh, if, you, if you can open your mic, then you can ask a question. Then we have also Azizul. Aswad, um, uh, Azizul, um, what's your question? Hello, hello. Hello. Kombawa, is it? Kombawa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just want to ask. So as a civil servant, I noticed that for the MAX scholarship, mm -hmm. we do need to apply through our government, right? Yes. Before submission. But for the other scholarship that are eligible, do I have to submit through the government or straight to the... Nagoya University. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so, actually, Queen Queen did a good job in her section in kind of dividing the different scholarships. So, uh, for the mixed uh, embassy recommended scholarship, uh, you need to apply at the Japanese embassy in your own country, 
Uh, but the other scholarships, generally, you need to apply either uh, when you are um, before the application, uh, then you can apply uh, like during the application process. So that was the university recommended MEXT and the uh, G30 scholarship. Uh, then there were some uh, scholarships that you can apply after enrollment, after you have been accepted to Nagoya University. So, oh, uh, yeah. for example, that was the JASA scholarship. You apply through the university, but after you have enrolled. Then there's a whole list of uh, other private scholarships that are offered by private companies and like different organizations. And oh, those yeah. uh, you don't apply through us or through the university. You apply directly to that organization. So... Uh, yeah, again, you can check the recording. Uh, the last two slides I a bit went over kind of quickly. Those were the ones with the long lists of different private scholarships that you can apply for. Any other questions? Uh, yes. And then, uh, so I need to get enrolled first before I apply for the scholarship, is it? Uh, yeah, it depends on the scholarship. So some scholarships um, you you can apply before even applying to Nagoya University. Mm -hmm. uh, and some some you apply uh, at the same time as you are applying and some you apply to after uh, you have been enrolled, after you have entered the university. So uh, since there are actually so many different scholarship options, then that yeah. means the schedules are kind of variable. Yeah, yeah, and then my last question. Sorry. Yeah, then, go uh, ahead. For for a, a graduate graduate program, mm -hmm. so we do have to search for our own supervisor first, or after enrollment. Um, so uh, that one you have to do uh before, before uh before the application, oh, or before I, you submit your application. My, oh, I search by my own first for the supervisor. Yeah. I apply and then I go enroll, then I can apply for any eligible scholarship. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So uh, mm -hmm. I can uh, I can mention to you that uh, you can actually go to our YouTube channel here, this Nagoya G30. But just a few weeks ago, we gave a detailed presentation similar to this one about uh, how to apply to graduate school. And there uh, I explain how to contact a potential supervisor and also how to submit the application and things like that. So I recommend you to check that out. And I can also tell you that uh, we somehow decided to uh, have this scholarship uh, presentation right now because in many countries, the embassy recommended MEXT scholarships are now open. So oh. like, for example, in my home country in Finland, uh, uh, they always... Um, uh, like the application period is always in May. So I would recommend uh, you to check at your local embassy to see if uh, if it's if the application period is open now and you can uh, already apply for the scholarship now at the same time as you're applying uh, for the graduate school. Yeah, I already applied for the MEX. Because oh, really? It, yeah, it was due April ago for Malaysia. Oh, okay. I guess yeah. it depends on the country. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you Arigato. so much. <laughs> Arigato. Hi. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Again, uh, you can raise your hand if you have a question. Nanasan, do you have another question or did you forget to lower your hand? Okay, well, uh, we are quite, uh, uh, again, running uh, over time. Uh, so uh, perhaps we, uh, perhaps we uh, end today's uh, webinar here. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining this seminar. I'm uh, sorry, I always uh, kind of run over time, uh, but I, I just hope that this seminar kind of gives you a little bit of hope. Maybe you thought, oh, applying for scholarship is uh, and applying for university is so tough, but I hope I could show you. No, actually, 
studying in Japan is quite affordable and there are a lot of different options and uh, try to go through the materials I showed you today to see if there is a scholarship that fits specifically uh, with your situation. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Um, uh, if you want, join the seminar uh, we will have about the general admissions process in one month. Uh, you can check out our website also. And uh, if you're interested about like student life and things like that, uh, you can also follow us in social media. Uh, the best way to contact us if you have any further questions is uh, by email to this uh, apply at Nagoya at, at G30 Nagoya dash U dot AC dot JP address. Good. So I would like to say uh, thank you so much for everybody and especially for Queen Sun uh, for uh, being our G30 ambassador today. And uh, thank you also for the admissions office. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. Thank you.